Good evening, and welcome to Turner Christian Church's online Maundy Thursday service. Maundy Thursday is the night when we remember the Last Supper that Jesus ate with his disciples. This is a very important moment in Jesus' ministry and in his work with his disciples. It's the night on which Jesus set the example for them by washing their feet. It is the night when Jesus instituted communion as an observance in his church. And it is the night when he gave his most important commandment, that we should love one another. This year, doing a Monday Thursday service is complicated. And as we were preparing, I realized that the service we used last year could be done at home. Because when we wrote this service for last year, we had everybody come into the fellowship hall and sit at different tables. And they went through the beats of the service at their tables with the people they were sitting with in order to experience it more like a meal. And we are actually able to do that this year. So how this is going to work is I'm going to lead you through the readings and the songs and the different beats as we reenact the whole text of the Last Supper and you will participate from home. And there will be points when you will need to pause the video and follow the instructions that we've given you. And then when you're ready, you just hit play and uh, continue on in the service with us and you'll be able to participate in everything that is a part of this Maundy Thursday service. So before we begin, I'll give you your first test of the pausing and playing uh, principle. I'm going to start by giving you the ingredients that you will need, the materials that you will need for this service and you can pause the video, go get them, and when you come back, I will pray for us, and we will go into the first step of this reading, which is the beginning of the story, and singing a song about how much we love to tell the story of Jesus. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a pitcher of water, and a large bowl, and a towel. You are going to need communion elements, meaning grape juice and bread, or something to eat and something to drink that is as close as possible to those uh, materials, and you're going to need a Bible. So go ahead and pause the video, go and get those materials, and then come back. Welcome back. As we begin this service, I will pray, and we will move into a reading of the beginning of the Last Supper. Dear Father, we, we come before you today on the day when you, when your son gathered his disciples together. Your word says that he earnestly desired to have this meal with them. And Father, we, we earnestly desire to be able to meet together, to be able to have meals together, to be able to share table fellowship. And in this time when we are unable Father, we, we feel it. We ask that your Holy Spirit would bind us together. That even though we are apart physically, we would feel united through your Spirit. We ask that you would guide us through this service. Open our hearts to what you have to teach us and to show us. We pray that the worship and the prayers that we offer today would be worthy of a worthy offering to you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. The day of unleavened bread arrived, when the Passover had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John with this task, Go and prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus replied, when you go into the city, a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large upstairs room already furnished. Make preparations there. They went and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Tell the story of unseen 
things above of Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story because I know it is true it satisfies my longings as nothing else can do I love to tell the story will be my theme and glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams I love to tell the story it did so much for me and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee I love to tell the story will be my theme and glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story for those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest and when in scenes of glory I sing the new new song it will be the old old story that I have loved so long I love to tell the story will be my theme and glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, Those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed, because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, Not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly, because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. At this time, we will imitate our Lord by serving each other. In order to ensure that everyone can participate, we will wash each other's hands rather than feet. You should have a bowl of water and a towel at each table. As an act of humility, service, and love, please take the bowl and towel and pass them around the table, washing the hands of the person to your right.
After he said these things, Jesus was deeply disturbed and testified, I assure you, one of you will betray me. His disciples looked at each other, confused about which of them he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was at Jesus' side. Simon Peter nodded at him to get him to ask Jesus who he was talking about. Leaning back toward Jesus, the disciple asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread once I have dipped into the bowl. Then he dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son. After Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. Judas is perhaps the most hated person in history, and yet he is not the only human being to betray Jesus. In fact, as we will soon discover, he is not even the only disciple who will betray Jesus that very night. Peter will betray Jesus in his own way as well. And yet, there is a difference between Judas and Peter. While Peter sought redemption, Judas gave in to despair and never looked for forgiveness. And so now, as we reflect on the betrayal of Judas, each of us should recognize that we too have betrayed Jesus in our own way. The story of Judas reminds us that it is our own sin that makes the coming tragedy necessary. But Judas also reminds us that there is forgiveness for those who seek it. Please join me in a prayer or confession that you'll see on your screen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Matthew and Mark tell us that it was after Jesus predicted Judas' betrayal, but while he was still at the table, that Jesus shared the first communion with his disciples. In the face of his own betrayal, the sinfulness, selfishness, and corruption of humanity at his own table, Jesus offered his disciples reconciliation to God and to each other through the sharing of a sacred meal. This meal reminds us that Christ gave his body and blood for us while we were still sinners, and that he reconciles us to God and each other. At this time, we will observe communion at each table. Pause the video. Have one person read Matthew 26, 26 through 29, and have someone else pray for your table. Then have everyone share in the bread and the cup together. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself, and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for a little while longer. You will look for me. But just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. The name Maundy Thursday comes from the Latin word for commandment, referring to this command. And how often do we forget that this is a commandment, not a suggestion? And this commandment is so strong that it is supposed to define us. We are supposed to love so completely that when people think of Christians, they think not of cross necklaces or fish bumper stickers, but of unrelenting love. That is his command to us. Let us sing now, They will know we are Christians by our love. Spirit. 
Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you can't follow me now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I'll give up my life for you. Jesus replied, Will you give up your life for me? I assure you that you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. Let us pause to reflect on this moment that Jesus knows for certain that Peter will deny him three times before the night is over. And yet there is no condemnation, no anger or hatred in Jesus' heart. He knows exactly who Peter is, what he has done, and what he will do, and he loves Peter anyway. The same can be said for any of you. God knows exactly what you have done and exactly what you will do. He knows you completely, and he loves you completely, too. Let us celebrate that love by singing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious! Just did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come his grace has brought me say 
Jesus said, Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me, so that where I am you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on you know him and have seen him. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask for in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I give not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. Please join me in a responsive reading of Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears, and will proclaim to you what is the truth. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and proclaim it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's why I said that the Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. Soon you won't be able to see me. Soon after that, you will see me. I assure you that you will cry and lament, and the world will be happy. You will be sorrowful but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman gives birth, she has pain because her time has come. But when the child is born, she no longer remembers her distress because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. In the same way, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and you will be overjoyed. No one takes away your joy. In that day, you won't ask me anything. I assure you that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Up to now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, so that your joy will be complete. Look, a time is coming, and is here, when each of you will be scattered to your own homes, and you will leave me alone. I am not really alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, so that you will have peace in me. In the world you have distress, but be encouraged. I have conquered the world. 
The comfort that Jesus offers his disciples and the joy he promises are made possible only by the death that he will soon die on their behalf. It is through his suffering that all of this is possible. Let us remember his sacrifice by singing, Oh, how he loves you and me. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you will continue the journey to the cross tomorrow with our Good Friday service and out of the empty tomb on Sunday morning. We will close now with the prayer that Jesus prayed at the end of the Last Supper. Please pray with us. Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everyone so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I shared with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. This is because I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. They truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you gave me, because they are yours. Everything that is mine is yours, and everything that is yours is mine. I have been glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, even as I'm coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them in your name the name you gave me, that they will be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I watched over them in your name, the name you gave me, and I kept them safe. None of them were lost except the one who was destined for destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. Now I'm coming to you, and I say these things while I'm in the world, so that they can share completely in my joy. I gave your word to them, and the world hated them, because they don't belong to this world, just as I don't belong to this world. I'm not asking for you to take them out of this world, but that you keep them safe from the evil one. They don't belong to this world, just as I don't belong to this world. Make them holy in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. I made myself holy on their behalf, so that they also would be made holy in the truth. I'm not praying only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their word. I pray they will be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. 
I pray that they also will be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me so that they can be one just as we are one. I am in them and you are in me so that they will be made perfectly one. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Father, I want those you gave me to be with me where I am. Then they can see my glory which you gave me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, even the world didn't know you, but I have known you, and these believers know that you sent me. I have made your name known to them, and will continue to make it known, so that your love for me will be in them, and I myself will be in them. Amen.